My name is Andrea Malcolm. I am Vice President of Historic Denver. A new and reprised role for me. <laughs> I'm also the museum director here at the Molly Brown House Museum, which is our flagship property. I've been the director since 2009. I've had the privilege of calling this my work home and the honor of telling this woman's story every day. Um, I also have a few other hats that I wear that I think help provide you with an insight into my passions. I am a League of Women Voters member, and I also help register people to vote, because I think that's important. Um, I also sit on the board of the National Collaborative for Women's History Sites, where we want to elevate women's history all across the nation. Absolutely. And one of the ways we do that is through our Votes for Women trail. You can explore where voting enfranchisement happens all across the country through a virtual trail available online, National Collaborative for Women's History Science, a great organization. <laughs> I also sit on the board of a group called Irish Network Colorado, a group dedicated to telling the story of the Irish in the West. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Brown were both of Irish descent, and through them we're able to tell that story of immigration, migration, pathways that brought people here to America, brought people here to Colorado, and brought people to places like Leadville, Colorado, where the Browns made their fortune that allowed them to move down to this house here in Denver and then become so actively engaged in their community. Um, I also sit on the um, Historic House Museums Committee for American Association for State and Local History. Our new initiative is Making Democracy and Making History at 250. How do we tell the story of our country's upcoming 250th, which is also Colorado's 150th. Do you guys want to learn a really fun word? Yes. Mm -hmm. There is the sesqui semi quid centennial. <laughs> 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 Did you repeat that? <laughs> yes. We're the only state in the nation that will be able to say this word. <laughs> An easy way to do it is sesqui semi quit. Go fight win, sesqui semi quit. So it's the 150 and 250 mashed together in this beautiful new world <laughs> and word. So it's the semi quincentennial and the sesqui centennial, which is the 150th and 250. So ASLH nationally is working on such themes as who's included in our democracy historically and presently, who isn't some great themes, so I recommend you look at that, Making History at 250 uh, workbook and, and study and report and toolkit that's out there as a way to sort of understand how we can use history like Mrs. Brown to inform voters today. Um, so that's just a smattering of the things that I do. I'm also on the board of a forthcoming museum called the Museum of Denver. Did you know that museum, Denver doesn't have a museum dedicated to telling its own history. <laughs> so stay tuned for that one. So those are the things that I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about Denver and Colorado's history. I'm passionate about Mrs. Brown and this house and the stories that we tell. So Mrs. Brown, we all know her, Titanic heroine. Um, she stepped in when no others would give voice to the third class passengers who had survived the sinking of the Titanic when they lost their loved ones. She took that notoriety and fame and the sort of local activism work that she had been doing and turned it into a national platform that allowed her to talk about things like labor rights. So when the Ludlow Massacre happened, she was able to step up. The uh, <clears throat> multiple unions called on her to come to Colorado. She had been in Newport, Rhode Island. Come to Colorado with her connections, her network, her purse, yes. <laughs> she was good for that too. Uh, but how does a woman who's married to a mining magnet here in Colorado respond to an incident where workers go on strike? Then again, turn that into another platform that allows her to dream about running for the U.S. Senate here in Colorado. Mrs. Brown, <laughs> who's a good effort. <laughs> uh, but she's part of this national conversation that's happening about how do we talk about state-by-state -state initiatives, or do we do national initiatives? How do we enfranchise women as voters? And she's part of this sort of punish the party and power policy. How do we get the Democrats out of here 
and how do we get pro-suffrage, mostly Republicans, in office at that time? It's so opposite to what we think of today. Yep. When we Flipped think about the parties, they the completely flipped. Um, so Mrs. Brown is looking at how do I take Senator Thomas's seat as it's coming up? We're going to flip it. But then Margaret's a smart woman, but there are other smart women. So we have Alice Paul. We also have Alice Meredith locally a woman who started out as a reporter for the Rocky Mountain News and worked her way up to become known as the Susan B. Anthony of Colorado. Mm -hmm. She helped get the vote on the ballot, helped get men to the polls to make us the first state to pass women's suffrage by referendum in the country, which we're all proud of that, extremely proud. Wyoming and Utah, sure, sure. <laughs> territorial <laughs> charter, blah, blah, blah. That's <laughs> <laughs> Referendum. <laughs> um, we also have amazing women like Elizabeth Piper Ensley, who are also vital to the to the suffrage movement here in Colorado, rallying black voters who are now enfranchised thanks to things like 14th and 15th Amendments, who allow this voting enfranchise, enfranchisement to happen. They help get this on the ballot and help get it passed as well. So through Mrs. Brown, we not only talk about her efforts, but the efforts of all of the amazing women across Denver and Colorado who made suffrage happen in our state. And then Colorado became a model nationwide for how we passed the 19th Amendment. Um, I love looking at uh, cool old maps of the country where Alice Paul and Doris Stevens are planning their attack on the country, how they're going to make this happen. In 1915, they turned the Congressional Union into the National Women's Party, thanks to Alva Vanderbilt Belmont and all of her purse strings, <laughs> um, and how they used Colorado and the women in the West to be able to get the vote across the country. So we are those standard bearers. We are those amazing, strong women here in the West who help get things done. And Mrs. Brown is one of them. And that's why we love telling her story but using it to tell the story of all of these accomplishments and the people behind those accomplishments. And then once, of course, the 19th Amendment's passed, we have the League of Women Voters comes to, into the picture to educate and inform voters on how you fill out a ballot, how you find your polling places, who are your representatives. Mrs. Brown, unfortunately, didn't finish her bid for Senate because it wasn't ideal. Senator Thomas was pro-suffrage. He was on multiple uh, legislative hearings working towards enfranchising women. So Mrs. Brown said, I'll step back. We're good with Senator Thomas. But because of a nationwide conversation about a woman for Senate, a woman for Senate, we eventually get women in the Senate. And when women are making laws, women are making laws that help everyone. It's like accessibility. It's good for everyone. Yes. And when women are enacting legislation, it's good for everyone. And so she's part of this whole cadre of women doing this amazing work at the turn of the century, the teens, the 20s, the 30s. Frances Perkins, we were talking about the New Deal and that flip-flop that happened. And we have these amazing women doing this amazing work. And that's what we do here at the Molly Brown House Museum is use these amazing women to tell the story of how we got to today and why we need the League of Women Voters to keep us going. Okay. Uh, my name is Beth Hendricks. I'm the Executive Director of the League of Women Voters of Colorado. And I welcome you here tonight and thank you for being here. Uh, I know that many of you know that the League was founded by some of the same suffragists that we've been talking about this evening. Uh, suffragists that fought for the right to vote, and when they became certain that the 19th Amendment would pass, a few of them pivoted to, join, to form the League of Women Voters to educate this 26 million people, newfound electorate, on how to vote, the mechanics of voting, how to research candidates and issues, and how to run for office. Yay. <laughs> So uh, the, uh, some of the, the suffragists that moved over to education included Carrie Chapman Catt, the founder of the League of Women Voters, 
Uh, and today, 104 years later, our mission remains the same, empowering voters and defending democracy. Andrea mentioned uh, Alice Paul. I'd like to mention also that 100 years ago, in 1924, Alice Paul authored and introduced the Equal Rights Amendment. <laughs> Bless her heart. Can we get that passed? This year? Please, let's get that passed. Deadline. <laughs> yes. So, but now let's move to the present. Uh, we're heading into a big time for voter education. And I want to tell you about a virtual event we will be hosting a week from Saturday uh, that we call Making Democracy Work Day. This annual event uh, serves as the kickoff for election season and will focus on a number of ballot issues important to the league based on our stances, which are developed through member study, debate, and eventually coming to consensus. This year's event will feature information on Proposition 131 establishing all candidate primary and ranked choice voting for general elections. Amendment J, repealing the definition of marriage in the Constitution. Amendment 79, constitutional right to abortion. Proposition KK, firearms and ammunition excise tax that will create a fund for mental health services and gun violence prevention. Uh, and we will talk about Amendment 80, which we are opposing. Uh, uh, it's called a constitutional right to, to school choice. Uh, we see it as an excellent way to undermine public education. Uh, now, we will also be talking about HB 24B 1001. This is the bill that came out of the special ses session. Uh, regarding our property taxes. I'm sure you're all wondering what happened there. Yeah, I know really. I am. So uh, we'll be talking about that as well. Uh, we will, you might not know that Colorado is uh, a lead partner in the coalition that's working to draft and pass a Colorado Voting Rights Act. Uh, we will have one of our partners from Colorado Common Cause talking about that. Uh, that is, we're doing that proactively, just in case any other parts of the national VRA are gutted. Uh, we will have uh, a framework to recognize missing disinformation. Uh, we have information on uh, energizing young voters, and just general information on all of the all of the stuff on the on the statewide ballot. Since 1936, Colorado has distributed, the State League of Colorado has distributed nonpartisan information on each issue on the Colorado ballot. And Making Democracy Work Day is the official launch of those materials. Um, I will give you a sneak peek now, but it's just a peek because nothing's official until the 21st. Is that the 21st? The 21st of. Um, Yes, so first off, um, I want you to know that uh, on our website we have a loaded events calendar right here on, under the events tab. So please uh, take advantage of that. Um, here is our uh, agenda for Making Democracy Work Day. And let's see, let's get to the sneak peek for... Our, sorry, getting there. <laughs> nope, no worky, sorry. And while you're doing that, Great. I want to remind people, go to our calendar to register for Make Democracy Work Day so you can get the Zoom link so you can participate because that agenda is just, uh, it's just going to be an amazing. I have numerous day. agendas here with both uh, URLs and QR codes for uh, uh, registration. 
What time of day is it on the 21st? 10 a.m. to 1.45 p.m. virtual. All virtual. Just about everything we do is virtual because we're statewide. We have legislative lobbyists in the Four Corners area of Colorado. Mm -hmm. It's just all over. Mm -hmm. So on the 21st, you can expect to go to our website, uh, find on our uh, homepage a very easy post to uh, all the ballot issues. Each page will give you a full rundown of uh, each issue, including a downloadable uh, PDF so that you can print out anything and give it to all your friends. So um, an awful lot of uh, easily accessible and understandable information on each uh, uh, ballot issue, uh, as well as the league stance on those ballot issues. So does the league take a position? We yes or no? Uh, not on all. But on some? On some, yes. Uh, there are a few issues on the uh, state ballot that we don't, that don't fall under our purview. Uh, for instance, there's one about uh, big cat hunting, uh, lynx, bobcat, mountain lion. Uh, that's just not something the league deals with. Uh, plenty of other people do, and that's beautiful. So we don't take a stance on, on that one, um, but on anything dealing with education, housing, certainly elections, uh, general uh, human and civil rights, uh, we're going to take a position on it. Uh, and again, our positions come about through uh, member study, debate, and consensus. Literally, like the entire state or country needs to come together on consensus to, uh, for the league to have a stated position. So, um, our vote411.org site is another awesome option. Uh, it will launch for this election on October 5th, one month before the election, and just a week before your ballots are mailed. Uh, you will find uh, a lot of the same information that you can get on our website. It's just another way to find it. We want to make it easy. Easy, easy. If you're not a member, I hope you'll consider joining. Uh, we're a cure for the helplessness that many people feel at, at this time in our history. Um, we're a trusted platform for member engagement, voter engagement and advocacy, and uh, we're a cure for the helplessness. Uh, we also have some information for you to take if you so choose, if you would like some information on supporting the Colorado League. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization and we leverage every cent through our amazing volunteer network. Um, so your tax deductible donations stretch far. Yes.